Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rosedale Community Church Online. I hope you're having a good week. Yes, it's a bit odd. This is an extra message here at the end of August. But we were so blessed last Sunday with our service that we had in Chessent Park. And, and the message kind of really resonated with me. Actually, I wanted to record it so I could share it with the wider church and those who weren't there. We are at the moment following our Hope Found Here series based on Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now one of the most famous verses of hope in the Bible comes from Jeremiah. Jeremiah is the prophet who many call the weeping prophet because so many of his prophecies and words from God were words of woe, rebuke, sorrow and pain. But even in amongst the tears, there are some really powerful gems of hope. For example, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Wow, what a wonderful, beautiful, powerful and encouraging promise from God. It's one that continually inspires believers. God declares his sovereignty. He's in control. He declares that no matter what happens, he's got a plan. And that plan is to bring prosperity, well-being, hope and a future. But what readers often fail to appreciate is the context of this verse. It's actually part of a letter dictated by God, written by Jeremiah, who at the time is living in Jerusalem. But the letter is for the people of God who have been taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar and carried into exile in Babylon. These people, these Israelites, are forced from their homes, their jobs, their lands, their belongings, their families, and are made to march almost 900 miles across land from Jerusalem to Babylon. They enter a strange city and an alien culture. It probably took them about four months. Once they'd arrived in the new city, they're expected to become citizens there, working and living with no hope that they would ever return back home. The young sons of the nobility would be educated to take their place in the king's court. Others might be recruited as servants, and yet others would be given the lowest and most demeaning jobs in the city. Just imagine it. Everything you have known and loved has gone. Yet somehow, you have to figure out how to live when it feels like life is over. The language is different. The customs and lifestyle are different. For the Jews, whose identity is very much based in the ancient promised land of their fathers, this was terrible. I mean, how could they possibly live as displaced people without the land that forms who they are? Even worse, the temple, which was the very centre of their worship, where they always went to meet with God, to offer their sacrifices, is back in Jerusalem. And there in Babylon, how would they even be able to worship God? Well, it does seem that there are some self-proclaimed prophets among the exiles who were saying, oh, it's OK, it's not going to be long, we'll soon be returning to Jerusalem. And it is in that context that Jeremiah sends a letter, a letter from God. And this gives the warning that actually the exile is a punishment for the wicked ways of the Israelites. They had turned away from God. They had ignored his law. And as a result, nobody would be returning for 70 years. 70 years, that is a whole lifetime. I mean, those who would be old would, would no longer be alive. Babies who were just born, they would be old, 
when the 70 years are up. But the words from God are ones of hope for their new situation, for their new normal. God tells them to settle down, find jobs, build homes, plant gardens and create new lives. He tells them in this letter to live, marry and have children. He tells them, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Part of these plans to bless and prosper them is based on their faithful service as people of God in a strange land. In verse 7, God tells them, Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I've carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. And this is the heart of God and his emphasis on mission. He wants his people to bless those they live among. He calls on them not to get mired down in the sense of what they've lost and to live in depression and misery of what has passed. But he tells them firstly to look up and pray. Pray for blessings upon their new city and their neighbours. And secondly, he tells them to look forward and out, to seek life, to really live in their new environment to bless others, bless the people that they live among, to build, grow, work and have families. And I think this story has echoes for us today. Our normal life has changed. Jobs and friendships have to be renegotiated. Illness and bereavement has come as a shock. The economy is seriously messed up. And we haven't even been able to gather for worship for five months. Although we are all hoping that the schools will open next month and that will go smoothly, we are very aware that life is not going to look like normal for quite some time. We need to adjust. We need to adjust to what's happening now. But that new normal of what we've got to live out today, tomorrow, next week, next month, the next few months, can be one of hope. God promises that if we follow him, if we seek him, if we pray, then he will bless us. He will bless us and our neighbourhoods. He will bless the city in which we're living. I wonder what does that living look like for you? How might God be asking you to be a blessing and a hope in this new normal phase of life? As a church, we are looking to bless our community at this time. For the past four and a half months, I've been part of the Broxbourne Coronavirus Community Partnership. And part of our intent has been to consider what was needed in the emergency, but then also what is needed in the recovery phase that is now beginning. And so we, the church, have applied for and been given a grant to run the CAP money course, that's Christians Against Poverty, which helps people manage their household budgets. We're also hoping to become a centre for Memory Cafe that will support those with dementia, Alzheimer's and those living with folk with mental health issues, as well as some other projects that we've got in the pipeline and uh, we're trusting the Lord that he will open up the way as we move forward. So we are actively seeking God for his plans for us as Rosedale Community Church at a time when our city, Chesant Town, needs hope in the community. As the schools start back, we would really like to begin our youth and children's work. So please will you pray and ask the Lord if he is calling you to invest in our children and young people. And what about you personally? What about your new normal at home, in your jobs, with your neighbours? How is the Lord speaking to you about your future and how you can be a hope and blessing to those around you? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are sovereign, that you have a plan and a will that it is a plan to bless us, 
to prosper us, to give us a hope and a future. Lord, we can feel that the, the seasons are about to change. September is always a new start as the schools go back, as autumn comes, as the summer is over. Lord, we pray that you will lead us and guide us, that we will look forward and see what your hope is for this coming time. As a church, we pray for wisdom. We pray, Lord, for the projects that you are leading us to, to bless our community. And Lord, we also pray for individuals. How may I see the future with hope? How may I be a blessing to my neighbourhood, to those around me, sharing the hope of Jesus Christ with all we meet? Lord, we give ourselves over into your hands. We commit ourselves to following you. May we live with hope and integrity, our eyes fixed on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, folks. Thank you for listening. Please, will you get in touch with us, either myself or any of the other leadership team. If you have a vision of hope for the next few months, we would love to hear We'd love to support you. May the Lord bless you. Amen.